you know, but it's it's tough. You know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's definitely not how I saw things happening. And I want us, I mean, I don't, I want us to be in the best position to win. Um, you know, my job is to, to play point guard and to be prepared and go out there and do what I do. Um, and er- everybody has a job. And right now we're not, we're not winning. I, I do want to win. You know, I don't think there's no secret that I, I want to win. And, um, you know, I think we got we to gotta do whatever we have to do to be in a position to win. All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. The Blazers are stuck in mediocrity, and I absolutely hate it. I was originally going to make a video on them when they had their five-game losing streak, but then they just capped off another three-game losing streak after blowing a lead to the Los Angeles Lakers last night. And at that point, I was at my boiling point. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going gonna, gonna to make a video. And here it is. So don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, and let's get straight into the content. By the end of last season, and I'm pretty sure everybody expected this Blazers team to start tanking and going to full rebuild mode considering the moves that they made at the trade deadline. They ended up dealing away CJ McCollum, aka Damian Lillard's right hand man, and they ended up getting Josh Hart in the deal, which is a vital piece of their team right now, but it really looked like they were going into that direction. That wasn't until they traded for Jeremy Grant in the offseason. They actually traded him for a first round pick. So I was like, you know what? Maybe they're actually going to start winning games. They ended up using their sixth overall pick that they got from tanking last season to get Shaden Sharp. And you would think with the starting lineup of a healthy Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, who has been absolutely electric these past two seasons, Josh Hart, Jeremy Grant, and Yusuf Nurkic. You would think that they would be, you know, probably up there with some of the playoff teams, maybe even in the plan. It doesn't look like that's even the case because right now they're sitting at the 13th seed with a respectable record of 21 and 25. That is not a place where I thought the Blazers would be. I thought they would at least be over 500. Did not think that they would be at the bottom of the conference. And the shitty thing is, is that I love watching their starting five, not to mention Nasir Little, not to mention Shaden Sharp. They're all fun to watch, but they cannot put it together collectively as a team at all. I want to say throughout these past 10 games, they're like 2-8. and eight. I think that that is absolutely horrible. But that's only one stat that I have. Let me read off these stats for you real quick, bro. Throughout the past 10 games, this team has been shooting 46% from the field, which will put them at like 22nd in the league. And from the three-point line, let me tell you guys, from the three-point line, they are shooting an abysmal 31% from the three. That puts them damn near dead last in the whole entire league throughout these past 10 games, bro. That is scary. And throughout this whole entire season, they are top five in turnovers a game. Not top five least turnovers, top five most turnovers. And that is scary in itself as well. I think they're averaging like a good 14, 15 turnovers a game. That is scary. That right there needs to be cleaned up asap if you even want to try to make the playoffs maybe they can make the play in this year considering you know from fifth seed all the way down to the 13th seed it's about like three game stretch so basically anybody that falls in the fifth and 13th seed can make the playoffs if you ask me so the blazers still have a chance but them having to play a lot of comp for the rest of the season kind of scares me a little bit it makes me think that they're not even going to make the damn play in I'm looking at their schedule right now and they really don't have that many breaks. Every single team in the Western Conference that is above them should be competition considering they're the 13th seed. If you're not playing the Rockets and if you're not playing the Spurs, it is going to be comp if in my eyes. Ironically, their next game is against the Spurs, but then they play Utah. Then they play Toronto, Atlanta, Memphis, Washington, Chicago, Milwaukee, Golden State. And then if you get deeper into their schedule for the rest of the season, they have a stretch where they got to play Boston, they got to play Philly, they got to play the Pels, they got to play New York, they got to play Boston again, they got to play the Clippers, they got to play Utah, Chicago, OKC, Pelicans again, got the Kings twice, Minnesota, Memphis, Clippers, Golden State, they're cooked. If they cannot win these games, they're done. And I don't know how far they're going to get because they have this issue not necessarily an issue because these two players are very, very good individually, but together as a backcourt, I just don't see it. Anthony Simons and Damian Lillard, I do not like this duo at all. I think that they are both very, very talented. I think they're very good. Everybody knows this, 
but I do not like them as a pair. And I think you gotta split one of them up. I think we've been talking about Anthony Simons in trade talks, but they're really, really hesitant to put him in. I think he has a lot of trade value, and I believe that a lot of NBA teams out there would want him. I know a lot of Blazers fans are going to be upset with me saying trade Anthony Simons or Damian Lillard. I'm pretty sure in this scenario, Anthony Simons would be the one to get dealt, considering how big this nigga Damian Lillard's contract is and how much of a hard on he has for Portland. I do believe that you can still get some trade value out of Anthony Simons, and maybe you can try to pay. Damian Lillard with some more complimentary pieces. Maybe you can help the bench out a little bit. Maybe you can even bring Nasir Little to the starting lineup or maybe even a Shaden Sharp to the starting lineup. I don't really know, but I feel like you just gotta break that up because in my personal opinion, I feel like it is CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard 2.0. It's both of them all over again. We all said this when they traded this man and they said they weren't going to trade um, Anthony Simons. And I was like, you know what? It's the same exact thing. So I'm expecting the same exact results. I'm going to give the Blazers some credit. They are playing some very good defense as a team this season. Um, I believe they're top 10 throughout their past 15 games or something like that. But I do not believe that the backcourt of Anthony Simons and Damian Lillard defensively can bring you a championship. I just don't think it can work. And I'm going to say this again so people don't think that I'm shitting on both of them. I think that they are very good individually. Together, I don't really think I can say that. I mean, they both play damn near the exact same way. People were saying the same thing about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown as well. They are both able to get 30 on the same exact night. I've seen them do it time in and time out. But I can't say the same for Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons. They are both able to get 30 on the same night when I've only seen Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons do it one time. One time. And that right there in itself is kind of concerning in my eyes. I do not think that this pairing can work. And I think you need to trade Anthony Simons while his trade value is so high. But at the end of the day, I really do think that this team can still make the plan or the playoffs considering how tight the West is right now. Um, but that's like all I got for y'all today. Hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully Blazers fans don't kill me in the comment section. Please don't. But I'm about to get out of here. I'll see y'all later. Like the video. Peace. I don't know what that was.